Welcome to Distressed to Joyful, Bailey's Way. I'm your host, Bailey Raber, here to enlighten you and the rest of the world about one of the most misunderstood mental health disorders out there, bipolar disorder. In each episode, we'll learn more about my personal journey with bipolar 2 disorder, how I've struggled with it, and how I've learned to overcome those struggles. Together, we'll laugh, we'll cry, and most importantly, we'll have fun. You'll leave each episode feeling hopeful and stocked full of useful information on how you can better yourself and the world around you. Hello, friends. I am so, so, so happy to be back. Uh, If you are not following me on social media, then you might be wondering where I was last week, and I was not prepared. (laughs) Like, that's as easy and simple as I can explain it. I just wasn't prepared. So, I am back from my trip to Europe, and I'm engaged! So, if you're on YouTube, you can see me twiddling my fingers, like spirit fingers with my little ring on, and I'm so excited. And in case you haven't guessed, I was proposed to while we were in Europe, while we were in Paris, France. It's been a dream of mine since a little girl for that to happen, and it happened. (laughs) And so I'm just really, really excited about all of the great things that are to come. And I don't want to talk a lot about the engagement in this episode, so I'm going to keep this short. But for those of you who are curious, we did have... um, we, I mean, I didn't plan any of this. Monish planned all of it. (laughs) But Monish actually hired a proposal planner in Paris. That's like a huge thing nowadays. And with his package, he got professional photos of us and a fucking professional video. So cool. So I'm going to put both of those, the photos and the videos in the show notes so you can check those out. Huge shout out to the Paris photographer for getting those photos taken care of. And there's a whole list of other people. Um, I cannot pronounce the name of the uh, excuse me, the proposal planners. It is in French. All of the names are actually in French, besides the Paris photographer. So I'm gonna put their Instagrams in the show notes as well to give them credit. And for those of you who are looking to do the same thing, you'll have some place to start. (laughs) Speaking of my trip to Europe. I will definitely be writing about those those days, the trip, everything. It was so much fucking fun. It was literally the break that I needed. And also, I will be featuring this trip on Travel Tales. So get excited because all of that is going to come full circle. And I'm going to share all of it with you. And I'm super excited to share all of it with you. Speaking of travel... I've actually finished writing the next blog post in my blog post series, India Trip, from March of 2022, which recounts my first trip to India, and all of you who are like, damn, finally the next day, life happens, shit happens, these things take time. Blog posts take time, and I take my time, because I want to give you guys the best content I can give you, and all of the information, all of the links. That way, if you want to go to India, you can find all of the things that I've done and I've mentioned. But get super excited because this blog post is about my trip to the Taj Mahal. Yes, the day that everybody has been waiting to read about. (laughs) So again, all of these uh, blog articles that I'm writing about my trip to India will appear on Travel Tales here on the podcast in the mini-series. So for those of you who don't want to read everything and you just want to wait for me to recount it all via my voice, which will hopefully be less scratchy than it is today, apologies guys, I've been trying to get these allergies to go away, it's clearly not working, (laughs) but just um, be aware that that's going to happen and just get excited. It's, It's exciting, all of it is just so fun and so exciting. And real quick, for those of you who are watching on YouTube right now, you're probably like, where the hell are you? And I am actually sitting in my car recording on my lunch break because, oh my God, this weekend was horrendous. It was really horrible. It was not fun. And I'm not going to go into any details, but most of the weekend, Monish and I just spent feeling kind of down and depressed and just not ourselves. And so... Thankfully, yesterday I was starting to feel better, but unfortunately I had homework and other shit that I had to do that has 
very strict deadlines that I'm getting paid to do or like I said for school and so this podcast I'm not making money from so I had to put it on the back burner which is why I'm recording in my motherfucking car today. (laughs) <laughs> but you know what? For those of you who are watching on YouTube, you're welcome for a change of scenery because it's not going to always be the same. Obviously, I'm happy to switch it up for you guys. Please take note of my lunch on my shirt that I spilled because I knew I was going to do that right before I started recording. And sure enough, I thought it into existence. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into today's episode, self-discovery number one, this is why I'm an overachiever. So guys, today in this episode, I am speaking directly from the heart as I recently came to the realization about the two main reasons as to why I'm an overachiever. And interesting enough, one of the realizations I already had, and I actually spoke about it in a recent episode, we'll talk about that in just a second. But the second realization that I had actually came while we were in Europe. We had lots of moments where we were on the metro, we were on the train, we were on planes. We were constantly shuffling around buses to and from different areas. And when we were on these, I most of the time just kind of was thinking, right? I mean, you've got all this free time now. I usually do not have free time. So I spent a lot of time in thought. And I don't know exactly when on this trip I came to realization number two, and I'll again go over both these in just a moment, but that's when it occurred. And guys, these, this right here is why it is so important to take time to just fucking chill and to just not do anything. And maybe this speaks to some of you guys, but I know that this is definitely speaking to me because I'm constantly, what am I doing next? What am I doing now? On the go, 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 do, do. And when you just constantly go and constantly do, you don't have time to sit down and reflect on yourself, on your life, on current situations. And so I'm very grateful that I had so much time on this trip to Europe to do these things because it's necessary especially if you're looking to go towards self-growth, to increase your self-awareness. All of these things require reflection and taking time to really evaluate your life, your actions, your choices, all of these things. So here are the two main reasons as to why I'm an overachiever. Number one, while growing up, Productivity was seen as good in my household, while things that weren't deemed productive behavior were viewed as bad. And number two, my parents showed interest and value in me when I showed them something that I achieved. And if I didn't have anything to show them that I'd recently achieved, then I wasn't given any of the interest and the value from them. And within this, guys, I basically learned at an early age that love was earned and I had to achieve something in order to earn love. So let's talk briefly about the first one because I actually discussed that quite a bit in episode three of this season which is titled I hated being in my household while growing up and within that guys so my parents for whatever reason deemed productivity was good and behaviors and actions that were not productive were bad. And this kind of thinking, this black and white kind of thinking, guys, is really, really detrimental to mental health. Because growing up, I had the idea that if I was doing something, maybe it was fun, maybe I was just having fun with my friends, jumping on the trampoline, whatever. If I'm doing something that was fun, but nothing came from it, there was no outcome, there was no something achieved, there was nothing that I gained from doing this fun activity, then I shouldn't be having fun and I shouldn't be doing this fun activity because I'm not gaining anything from it. And guys, oh my God, Brene Brown is the one who taught me that that is not the correct way to view life and that having fun and playfulness is very, very important to our mental health. So I'm going to drop some of Brene Brown's books in the show notes, specifically Braving the Wilderness, because I believe that's the one that really, really taught me to learn how to have fun. 
Because guys, fun and letting loose, you're letting go. And when you let go and you just get to relax for once and just enjoy yourself, you can go back to the productive things that actually matter with a much stronger attitude and more willingness and desire to actually get things done. So it's not to say that we shouldn't do anything productive ever, but if we are only doing productive things, we're eventually going to get burnt out. And y'all, I have fucking burnt myself out one too many times. (laughs) <laughs> so I know this to be true. And to be honest, in the last couple of years, I have started taking so many vacations every year with Monish, whether it be a weekend trip or a two-week long trip in another country. These things are so important for both of us, for our mental health, because it gets us out of our normal daily life. It gets us out of productivity mode, and it allows us to just relax and enjoy ourselves and to have fun. So that way when I come back to reality and I come back to my job or my podcast or my freelance sewing design company, all of these things, I am so ready to hit the ground running because I gave myself a break. And these breaks, y'all, I cannot stress this enough, are seriously so important. And I learned the hard way this. I really learned this the hard way last semester, fall 2022, when I took on a bunch of costumes that I was designing for friends and clients. I was taking three college courses. I started working a a 40-hour-a-week job that I commuted at least an hour to and from each day. And I literally had no time for fun or time for myself. And I had a breakdown, and it was fucking horrible. It was horrible. (laughs) And I never want to do that again, which is why I'm choosing to learn from my mistakes and realizing, okay, I need to have breaks. I need to schedule time for fun. I need to schedule time to get out of the city and to get out of my normal everyday go, 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 hustle, 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 because you can't go, go, go forever. (laughs) So... All of that stems from, again, my parents and how they raised us. And again, I don't know why this was the mentality. I have no idea. And I'll probably never know. But what I do know is that they were doing the best that they could. And this was what they thought was best. And so now, as an adult, I can look back and say, you know what? That wasn't the best, but they did the best that they could. So now I need to figure out how I can undo this thinking, this idea, this need to be productive that is drilled into my head, it is time for me to undo that so I can move forward with my life in a healthy, happy way. And like I said, I've been doing that. So snaps for Bailey (laughs) because I've been working on this. Okay, so number two, let's take a deeper dive into this one. And that I learned at an early age that love was earned. So let me tell you a couple stories and kind of help paint the picture as to why I believed this. And I believed this for a very, very, very long time. And it's sad, but it is what it is. And I'm glad that I've learned to no longer believe this, to undo these kinds of thinkings. So I remember as far back as the, probably the fifth grade, I think it was the fifth grade, maybe the fourth grade. But I learned to be productive and to achieve things. And I don't don't remember what specifically sparked this in my mind, but I do remember trying to earn as many Girl Scout badges as possible. And that just, that went out of control, you guys. So my mom was one of my Girl Scout leaders, and so she was allowed to sign off on badges that I earned. And I remember on the weekends as a kid, and even in the summertime when Girl Scouts was no longer in session because we took summer breaks from that too, but I remember taking my, my badge book and finding badges and literally checking off requirements and doing the things and then going and showing them to my mom. And she would check off that I did them and then I would earn the badge. And I remember specifically one weekend, guys, where I just did this the whole fucking weekend because every time I took it to her, I got a good job. Great, you've earned this. Good job. Never I'm proud of you. I don't recall ever my mom ever saying that she was proud of me. But I got that little like, 
you did something, you accomplished something, good job. And that little gold star that I was receiving, you know, verbally from my mom, to me, that triggered, okay, she loves me. She loves me. Let's do it some more. Let's do some more. Let's get some more love. Because if I wasn't doing these things, I wasn't getting this kind of attention. And looking back, I do know that my parents had their own things to deal with and that that's part of the reason why they weren't as emotionally available to me and my siblings. So I understand, you know, they were doing the best that they could. But as a kid, when I'm only receiving praise and good jobs and love and affection when I achieve something, that sets me up my that sets my mind to think, okay, I have to keep achieving. I have to keep doing. I have to keep earning in order to get this love that I want so badly from my parents. Other things that I did was one year I set a goal to sell over a thousand boxes of Girl Scout cookies. And I remember my parents saying that they didn't think I could do it. And what did your girl do? She sold 1,147 because I'm a fucking overachiever. (laughs) And I remember receiving so much praise from people at church, um, my Girl Scout leaders, my, like my parents, I guess. I don't, I don't specifically remember that, but I'm, I'm sure that they did. My grandparents were happy for me. Like all of the, this praise and just feeling like, wow, I'm so loved. Look at me. So then The next thing that I went on to achieve was in seventh grade, we were told that in eighth grade, you have to do one book report every six weeks. And where I grew up, guys, each semester was divided into six weeks. So we had three six weeks the first semester, three the second. So you would have a total of six book projects throughout the year. But... As soon as you earned 100 AR points, which AR stands for Accelerated Reader, which means you read a book and you took a test over it and you got these points. So as soon as you earned 100 points, you didn't have to do any of the book projects. I found that out at the end of 7th grade. So what did I do the summer before 8th grade? I read all 13 of the series of unfortunate event books. I read all four of the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants books. And I read like four or five other books and literally spent an hour after school for the whole first week of school taking all of these AR tests and getting all of these damn points. And I never once did a book project. And I remember being so excited to tell my mom and my parents being so happy for me and so so glad that I achieved this and getting the good job, pat on the back, you did great, blah, 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 and just feeling so loved from it. And guys, this became a pattern. I kept doing this for so long until one day I got tired of it and I got burnt out and I realized that, you know, what I'm doing all of this for love. I have to do all of this for love. This, this is too much. And that happened mid-high school, about sophomore year. But guys, the point being that love is not earned. Love is supposed to be given freely with no expectations in return, with no strings attached, none of that. Love is just something that you give unconditionally because you want to, because you're so full of love you're ready to hand it over to somebody else. And I didn't learn this until I was 25 and I met Renee Revellini. And I'm going to cry and she's going to cry when I send her this podcast episode. There's so many tears. (laughs) Good tears, of course. But it took until I met her and she just poured unconditional love into me. And she had no reason to. We didn't know each other. She is, you know... I'm not going to give any ages, but she's quite a bit older than me. She could almost be my mom if she had me when she was like in high school, guys. Like she had no reason to be this loving towards me, but she was my trainer at Camp Gladiator and she did this for everybody. And I watched her do this for everybody. And she's able to love everybody like this because she loves herself first. And that is when I learned, okay, I don't have to earn love. I don't have to achieve things to be loved. I can just love myself and love others and they'll love me back if they want to. (laughs) You can't force anyone to love you back. (laughs) 
<laughs> but yeah, so the overachieving, guys, coming back full circle, the overachieving that I do that I still sometimes struggle with is stemming from having to feel productive and needing to earn love. Now, I'll admit that I still struggle with the need to achieve. And I don't feel like I need to earn love from anybody anymore. I really don't. But what my therapist pointed out that my now fiance has also recognized and agreed with too when I stated this to him, my therapist pointed out that I have a need for validation from other people. That's what I seek. I no longer seek love because I have that. I have that in myself. I have that from people like my fiance Monish and Renee and Keith and a whole host of other people who love me like I love them. But validation is where I still struggle. I need other people to tell me I did a good job. I need someone to say, that's an amazing dress that you made. I can't just think that for myself. And this, this is now my work. So I'm now at a point where I'm like, okay, I understand where all of these stem from. And I understand that the problem is not the same, but a problem does still exist. So I'm telling you that what I'm now working on is figuring out, okay, how can I move forward and learn that my own validation is all I need? I'm the only one who needs to think that that dress I made is fucking awesome. I'm the only one who needs to be happy when I win second place or even better, first place, which hasn't happened in a while, (laughs) in a 5K run. I'm the only one who needs to be proud of me for achieving a 4.0 GPA in all of my last couple semesters of attending college. I don't need strangers on the internet to think that. I don't need my fiance to think that. I don't need his parents to think that. I don't need my best friend to think that. I am the only one I need to think that. And that is where I'm currently stuck. So, guys, I want to leave you with a challenge for yourself. And this challenge involves taking time to figure out, okay, where is something in your life that you recognize as a problem, but you're not sure how to move forward? So you may need help from your therapist. You may need help from a self-help book or a podcast episode like this. (laughs) But I challenge you to kind of reflect on yourself and say, okay, these are all of my great features. I am this. I am beautiful. I am that. I am a million other things. Obviously, affirmations are hard for me. (laughs) But also take the time to say, okay, well, where am I struggling? Where am I not where I want to be yet? And take the time to journal about it, reflect on it, talk to your therapist about it, read a book on how you can move forward. Like I mentioned Braving the Wilderness from Brene Brown helped me to learn that I don't have to be productive all the time, that I can just do things for the hell of it, that I can just, I deserve to have fun and to play like everybody else. So that's what I want to leave you with today. And also, I just want to point out that as you probably noticed, the title of this episode is self-discovery number one. So as I continue my self-awareness journey, which started back in 2019 and is still ongoing to this day in 2023, I've decided that probably once every other month, I'm going to have an episode where we talk about a recent self-discovery of mine, how I got there, what I'm doing, whether I'm in the middle of moving forward or if it's something I've already overcome. I want to share these things with you guys because self-awareness is so key in order to grow as a human being. And the more you learn about yourself, the more you're able to be compassionate towards others when you see them struggling with something that you may have struggled with exactly yourself. So again, the challenge, find something that you can work towards on improving in your own life and Yeah, (laughs) I'm speaking from the heart, so I don't have a sign off necessarily, but just remember guys that even though you, just remember guys that flaws within yourself, they're not a bad thing. 
they're not. We all have flaws. We are all imperfect. We are all humans. But taking the time to recognize these flaws and these struggles and moving forward, again, that's going to just make you such a better person overall, not just for yourself, but for those around you. Okay, y'all, so this segment was created for you. It's win of the week, and this is a way for us to spread some positivity and share a good thing that happened in life recently, whether it be that you received a job offer to the company of your dreams or that you finally gained the energy to shower for the first time in three days. No matter what win is your win, there is no such thing as too small of a win, and we celebrate all wins equally, okay? So also, guys, this is your opportunity to receive a shout-out on the show, and you should know by now that I love giving shout-outs and that I am super excited to get to do that, and I hope you guys are too. <laughs> so today we have Kelly, who wrote in via the website, the one of the week forum, and Kelly says that, My win of the week is that I was able to go visit my parents last weekend. They're not in good health, especially my dad, and they live far away from me. She says that I live in Georgia while they live in Ohio, so I don't get to see them as often as I'd like to. So spending the weekend with them made both them and me so happy. I hope to get to do this again sometime very soon. Aw, Kelly, I'm happy for you and your parents too. I mean, I can't imagine how hard that is. Actually, I can't imagine how hard that is. Let me correct that statement because my fiance's parents, uh, they have kind of, you know, taken me in as their own and they live in India. So while that is a long, really long distance and they're not in bad health, I can understand where you're coming from, Kelly, and how important it is to get to spend time with these people that you love and how hard it can be when there's a lot of distance in between. So I'm really, really glad that you got to spend time with them, and I also hope that you get to see them again soon, and I'm happy for you. I really am. So do you have a recent win that you want to share? Send in your submissions by heading over to What Is haybalesdoing.com slash win of the week. You can also send in your submission. You can also send your sub- You can also send in your submissions directly to my DMs on Instagram at distressed to joyful underscore Bailey's way. Or send an email to what is haybalesdoing at gmail.com. In the next episode, we are for real going to talk about the importance of writing things out. (laughs) I know I mentioned in the last episode that we were going to talk about this now, but this came up and this was something I needed to slide on in first. So I'm actually glad though that I am going to be talking about this in the next episode because right now I'm actually going through a situation where I'm going to be writing things out. So I'm going to be able to explain this in a lot more detail and with a lot more clarity for you guys because I'm going to do that this week. (laughs) I'm not going to tell you what I'm writing out. I'm not going to share that. But I'm going to explain my thought process, how things work, why I do this, and how it's helpful for me and how it can be helpful for you too. So be sure to tune in to this new episode coming in two weeks. But for now, thank you for tuning into the show. Be sure to follow the show on Instagram at distressed to joyful underscore Bailey's way and also on Facebook. Also, be sure to head over to the website, whatishaybalesdoing.com to check out the show notes from this episode. If you enjoy this podcast, help spread the word by leaving a rating on Spotify or writing a review on Apple Podcasts because y'all, I want to hear from you. I really, truly do. Also, you can watch this episode for free on YouTube and you can spread the word and tell others, especially those who might not have access to a podcast platform. Lastly, don't forget to hit subscribe to stay up to date with all of the new episode releases. But until next time...
Take it easy, stay grateful, and be joyful. Bye!